Four years ago, I made my first major contribution into the field of PowerPoint programming and the use of Microsoft Office products for unconventional purposes. I have received positive, negative, and confused comments in response to the PowerPoint Turing Machine video, as well as some repetitive ones, such as, but can it run crisis? But can it run crisis? And 19 more copies of, but can it run crisis? Which I continue to receive every few months or so. Overall, it seems my work has successfully changed the way people think about PowerPoint, and I am pleased to say interest in PowerPoint appears to be on the rise. In fact, according to cherry-picked Google Ngrams data, usage of the word PowerPoint in publications has increased dramatically over a certain period of time. But there is still more work to be done to convert PowerPoint into a mainstream programming language. As of this video, PowerPoint is not listed in any of the top 10 top 10 programming language lists on Google search results page and has yet to appear in any Stack Overflow developer survey. Some people might attribute the lack of code written in PowerPoint to the fact that PowerPoint is an inelegant programming language, or that running PowerPoint programs requires a large memory-intensive interpreter. However, the popularity of JavaScript and Electron applications shows it is ease of use, not elegance or efficiency, that drives programming language popularity. So maybe what we really need is more tooling to help the average developer get started with PowerPoint programming. In an ideal world, an aspiring PowerPoint developer could take code they have already written in a different language, like C, and compile it directly into PowerPoint. Of course, creating such a PowerPoint compiler would be a tremendously difficult task, but I wouldn't be the first to attempt it. Last year, a group of four researchers at the University of Chicago created PowerPoint Suite, a set of Python and Auto Hotkey scripts that can interface with and run PowerPoint Turing machines. Using PowerPoint Turing machines for addition, subtraction, increment, and decrement operations, they could perform all arithmetic calculations needed to run a C program after it was compiled to a simplified assembly language. Their entry into the Uncommon Hacks Hackathon won Most Technically Impressive Project, though apparently the JP Morgan Best Hack for Social Good Award went to a different team. Their impressive work shows that PowerPoint can be used to make meaningful calculations in a semi-practical way and can do more than just run toy models. But can we take this idea further? Can we make PowerPoint implement not only the arithmetic of complicated programs, but also the control flow and memory management with reasonable efficiency? Could we efficiently simulate, say, the entire Intel x86 instruction set in PowerPoint? Probably not, but let's try anyway. The PowerPoint Turing machine is functional, but very inefficient. Unlike a theoretical Turing machine, it has a finite eight cell tape and requires over 16,000 animations, a number which grows quadratically with the tape size. An Intel 8086 processor, the first chip to use the x86 instruction set, works on 16-bit numbers, and certain operations like multiplication provide 32 bits of output. To simulate such operations efficiently, we will need our PowerPoint structure to be modeled more like a circuit than a Turing machine. Simulating a circuit in PowerPoint is fairly easy. As with the PowerPoint Turing machine, we rely on the user to drive the computation by clicking randomly on any link that is exposed. To read a bit, a circuit component provides two buttons, a 1 and a 0. To output a bit to another component, it provides covering rectangles that reveal or block the inputs to the next component. Using this method, we can create a full adder just like the one used in a real processor. The adder takes in two input bits and a carry bit, and outputs one output bit and one carry bit to be passed on to the next adder. By creating a row of adders, we can successfully add 16-bit numbers, and by copying elements, we can avoid animating each adder separately. Implementing subtraction and bitwise operators is just as easy. Multiplication can be implemented as repeated addition and shifting. Using a modified adder, we create an accumulator that adds the provided number to the running sum. We also create a shift in place register that we feed one of the inputs into. Division is similar, but we use subtraction and shift in the opposite direction. With basic arithmetic out of the way, we come to a bit of a problem. If each operation is implemented on a different slide, we need some way to send data between slides, but there doesn't seem to be any way to do this. Actually, there is one thing that is preserved when a PowerPoint switches slides that can be used to send data, the current position of the mouse. We just need some way of enforcing that the user doesn't move their mouse across certain boundaries at certain times. And using mouse over links, we can do just that. The user is now instructed to click randomly, provided that they don't cross any of the boundaries. If they do, the processor crashes. Using this concept, the user can transfer single bits between slides based on the position their mouse is at when it enters the slide. 
By alternating between slides, we can transfer entire bytes and implement registers. Now comes control flow. We can store each instruction on a different slide, but we need some way of indexing into the instructions based on the value of a register. To do this, we create a literal lookup table of links. Each bit of the instruction pointer narrows down a subset of the table. Once all bits are entered, a single square is revealed. Our instruction pointer slide can now jump to instructions and be easily incremented. Memory can be handled very similarly with a lookup table, except instead of leading to an instruction slide, each leads to a one byte rewritable memory cell. Calculations, control flow, memory. What else do you need in a processor? Well, it turns out quite a lot. When I started this project, did I realize that what I had set out to do was probably insane? Yes. Did I plan to successfully implement a working PowerPoint CPU anyway? Yes. Did I fully intend to implement all 81 of the original x86 instructions and create a custom micro-instruction language to do it? Yes. While working late at night dragging PowerPoint auto shapes around, did I finally surpass my capacity to pour time into this project as the April 1st deadline approached? Sadly, also yes. But then I realized I need to stop thinking about this like a computer scientist and start thinking like a mathematician. Instead of building an efficient PowerPoint processor, it suffices just to show that such a processor can exist. Having constructed the essential pieces of a processor in isolation, and having verified that PowerPoint is able to handle composites of pieces of similar complexity, it trivially follows that an efficient PowerPoint processor and a full PowerPoint C compiler can be created. But I know some viewers will find this conclusion unsatisfying. And to them I say, my code is on GitHub. Completing it is left as an exercise to the viewer. And while we are working from a theoretical point of view, it's actually hard to see what can't be done in PowerPoint. Graphical output can be accomplished using small rectangles addressed similarly to memory. Text input and output are achievable by creating an on-screen keyboard. Mouse input can be captured with a grid of clickable rectangles. I guess what I'm saying is, in theory, maybe it can run Crisis. <laughs>